This is my path, my journey. I'm willing to explain it all to you guys. No holding back anything. I just hope you're ready for the experience. And I just hope you can handle it. Disclaimer, this video was intended for an adult audience only. Viewer discretion is advised. Anything you see in this video, do not attempt to recreate. This video was created for documentation purposes only. Our purpose is education. We are not justifying or glamorizing using substances. What we are doing is educating people on the substances that we have used and what it has done for us. Do not recreate or do not redo the substances we have done just because we talk about it. <coughs> What's going on? I want to make this a trip report on um, a capsule ayahuasca experience I had last, not this past spring equinox, but the spring equinox of 2018. Um, <clears throat> so spring equinox 2018, um, for those that don't know, I use Kratom um, almost every day. So for five days prior to me taking the capsule ayahuasca, I stopped using Kratom. I stopped using all herbs <clears throat> besides L-theanine. I was using L-theanine up until the day. Like the day I used capsule ayahuasca, I took probably... 100 milligrams of L-theanine early in the morning <clears throat> and didn't take the capsule ayahuasca until 10 o'clock at night. So I took it with a couple of friends of mine, my friend Fai and his wife, and we, I went to their house. <clears throat> I remember we didn't have a mortal and pestle, so, and we didn't have like a coffee grinder that worked or anything, so I remember we had this big rock and we started crushing the seeds up with this big rock inside like these plastic bags, crushing it up, uh, capsulized uh, the seeds. Um, then we each, we so we capsulized three grams of Syrian root seeds each and also 100 milligrams of DMT each. So 100 milligrams of DMT just fit in one capsule. So, um... <clears throat> We took the serum root seeds, and then 30 minutes later, um, we took the DMT. So, after, first things first, the serum root seeds themselves had, a, had an effect. Like, it had a um, complete anti-anxiety, anti-just depressant type effect, right? Felt happy felt just good to be alive, felt comfortable. I, like the feeling that I had, like the body comfortability, like the body warmth, or <clears throat> I can almost compare it to like kind of feeling like almost reminding me of Kratom, almost reminding me of the Kratom feeling, <clears throat> but just a little different. Now I can see exactly why, I remember I said this too during the experience that I could see exactly why the MAOIs were the first antidepressants that um, they used, but I can also see why they stopped using anti um, stopped using MAOIs as much um, for antidepressant reasons, at least <clears throat> because you know the interaction issue with MAOIs is you know is a severe issue, but it worked amazing. Like I. All my worries and anxieties that were going into the experience were immediately gone after the San seeds started kicking in. Um, <clears throat> then, you know, 30 minutes later, I had no hesitation to take the DMT because I was like, yeah, I'm ready for this now. You know, I'm, I'm just feeling the vibe. I'm just, you know. <clears throat> so after I took the DMT, I, it was like... It couldn't have been like 15, 20 minutes. Um, I started feeling this cold feeling, right? So it started coming from my chest. And it felt like, and I say this cold feeling because it felt like almost like jolts of electricity going up into my mouth, into my head. from Up from my stomach, though, but going up in my body. <clears throat> but instead of feeling like jolts of electricity, it felt like ice. It felt like it was freezing. Like, there was these jolts, and, like, there, it, it was shaped like electricity was, or that's what the feeling felt like. But yet, 
feeling like I was freezing from the inside where this where this thing was touching me. And then it felt like it was like, I don't know, in my neck or in my neck vein or whatever. And I remember feeling the back of my head, my neck kind of hurt a little bit. Um, I remember I was just sitting there like, you know, just, you know, I was... I was a little freaked out at this point <laughs> because this has never happened to me is smoking DMT because I have a lot of experience with smoke DMT but <clears throat> this is only my second or third experience with a uh, capsulized ayahuasca or any form of ayahuasca um, <clears throat> so I wasn't expecting that but I just went with it um, my friend Phi uh, he started throwing up um, like 20 30 minutes after he took it <clears throat> um about 20 30 minutes after uh, well after he ingested the dmt is what i mean now after 20 30 minutes after i ingested the dmt i had to lay down so i just laid down um blindfold over my eyes um but before i laid down i remember looking around and you know just observing the room and I hear, like, I hear a lot of people talk about their ayahuasca experience, and they go down to, the, a lot of people go down to the Amazon, though, when they do it. Um, but for me, this experience was, like, um, a lot of people don't talk about the visuals, so I'm going to explain the visuals real quick. And the quickest and most easiest explanation to describe the ayahuasca visuals that it does to the world around you before it takes you is it the visuals are very much like mushrooms, <clears throat> except if, I mean, everyone says mushrooms have a feminine vibe to it, like it's rounding and, you know, like whatever, but ayahuasca is definitely more feminine. Like if mushrooms were a masculine, ayahuasca is the feminine. Like basically that, that'd be like, because the visuals are almost the exact same, except more feminine, like more petite, like more, it's hard to explain, but like even so for example sometimes when i take <clears throat> um mushrooms i'll see in the clouds like in the sky if i'm looking at the sky the clouds will start to form into faces for me and then <clears throat> i'll just see like this geometrical patterns of faces just boom 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 just i don't know these faces just will start to form sometimes they'll like stack up against each other or sometimes whatever but i always see faces um and on ayahuasca, I also seen faces in the ceiling because his ceiling like had like uh, like dots on it or like somebody took the paintbrush and, you know, painted it, whatever. <clears throat> but it's like, I could see faces, but they were more feminine looking faces. On mushrooms, they, well now compared to ayahuasca, it's just, um, the mushrooms seem more masculine like face and then the ayahuasca is seen more feminine like. Um, but, so, I noticed that, but after I noticed that, <clears throat> I, you know, just laid down, closed my eyes, and just went with it. You know, and then I, st I started feeling that feeling, that cold feeling. It eventually reached my head. I remember thinking at one point, like, you know, whatever. I started kind of having this, uh, I remember talking to myself in my head, but then it felt like I was talking to something else in my head. But then, because I thought I was just talking to my my higher self or just talking to me, right? But then it's like the voice that was talking back, which I thought was me, became feminine briefly. Like, just briefly, it was a feminine voice. And then went back to my voice, then feminine, <clears throat> then my voice. And then, you know, I was just, I started getting the sense of these, there's just this feeling, right? That I had to, like, surrender so I just, you know, kind of whatever. I started getting the feeling in my body like I felt like water or I felt like vibrating. And then all of a sudden, things got real. And then the floor just dropped through. It was like, it was like the floor became an ocean. And like I dropped through into the floor. But as I dropped into the floor, it's like, you know how like if you drop in... So you've seen movies that where people fall through ice, and then because it's so cold, the ice kind of freezes back over, so they're hitting back on the ice, but they can't get out type shit. Kind of like that. <laughs> like, and I mean, it sounds so scary, but it, like it wasn't, it, it wasn't as intense as it sounds, um, but it was. Uh, <clears throat> because for a second, I couldn't breathe. 
and when I couldn't breathe, that's when I started freaking out. And that's when I started, like, kind of like, oh, my God, I can't breathe. What's going on? What the fuck? And then that's when I realized, okay, let go. Boom. And, I, and then I let go. And then slowly these visuals started to form, like, these, um, I, for people who have done DMT, when you smoke DMT, it's like you smoke it, and then all of a sudden this thing just comes flying at you. And then you see it from a distance, and all of a sudden it's just there, right? With this ayahuasca, it was that thing that's flying, coming at you on DMT. But it took like 15 minutes for it to like come together slowly. And when it came together, it wasn't as like built. <clears throat> there was a lot of blackness. And eventually, you know, eventually I started seeing the uh, geometrical patterns begin to form into the vortex and begin to form into the... Uh, these geometrical walls of some sort. Um, <clears throat> but then I noticed there was like these two beings that I noticed that they were in front of me and they were kind of like peeking out and like looking at me and then peeking out, kind of looking at me. Almost like they were playing hide and seek with me. And they had these big ass cube things in their hands or in their whatever, I don't know, hands, right? Who knows? But big ass cube things, and one was on this side, the other was on this side, and they were like in the middle of the vortex, right? And they were kind of like blocking off the vortex. And then, you know, they were kind of playing hide and seek with me. They both popped their heads out at the same time, like, and then I'd look at them and they'd pop back out and, like, you know, kind of play hide and seek. And then eventually, I kind of, I, then as that was going on, I noticed this, like, snake thing slither through the geometrical fucking tetrahedrons and like cubes and pattern things whatever that's over there on that side um and I just noticed it slithering <clears throat> so then I stopped paying attention to the being things the with the cube things and you know I looked at the snake thing for a second and noticed it was a snake and that's when I thought about, and I, it stopped me because I, I started thinking about, um, you know, how people say they've experienced um, Mother Ayahuasca in snake form. And that was the first time I've ever seen a snake on Ayahuasca or on any psychedelic whatsoever. Um, <clears throat> so I thought that was interesting. And in a way, <clears throat> um, I kind of followed the snake, realistically. It's like the snake kind of like guided me where it caught my attention and then I followed it. And then... It took me through the psychedelic realm, right, through this, this place, but then I started uh, <clears throat> thinking about, like, some, it took me, like, I had this immense therapy session as it was taking me, immense, the most intense and most, like, most therapeutic therapy session I have ever had in my entire life, and, you know, I talked about with it, I talked about my life, my hopes, my dreams, my fears, my worries, my uh, what I want to do with my life, what I, you know, my few regrets that I have in life. Um, <clears throat> I just talked about so much with it, and um, you know, there was a there's an experience that I had um, in physical life where um, so I have kids. And my son is in foster care right now. He got taken from me um, for some crazy shit. And then they claim I was on drugs when I was only... And then I just got CPS called on me again recently for saying I, I use Kratom. And it's like they didn't even know what Kratom was. So then they had a CPS case open. And like it's ridiculous. These people are ridiculous. But that, that's another... It's beside the point. But basically in this experience... Um, that's the only regret I have in life, right? And that I didn't fight hard enough. Um, and I mean, I still am have I still have the opportunity to get custody, um, so I'm still going to attempt again. But you know, they say if it doesn't work once, try again, type shit. But my thing is this: in the ayahuasca experience, when I was there, I was talking about this with Mother Ayahuasca, with the experience, with whatever the hell. It could have been myself. Who the fuck knows? But I was talking to this thing about it and because that's my only regret in life. The only thing. Like, if I was to die right now, that's the only thing I would regret. I don't regret anything else. Nothing else. But 
but at the same time, what the experience told me is that you need to forgive yourself. It like I sat there and I was like almost in tears and I kind of I mean I dropped a tear but I wasn't like shattering and tearing I just dropped a tear wiped it and like moved on with the experience after this but like it just told me that basically no matter what I do it will always love me no matter what I choose to do if I choose to fight for my son again then you know then that's what I choose and if I choose not to, it will not look at me any differently. It will not love me any differently. It will still love me the way it does. God, the universe, Mother Ayahuasca, whatever I was talking to, it will love me still, no matter what. And talking about it now, I mean, it, of course it gets me emotional a little bit, but it's just like, these experiences are extremely deep and emotional, especially ayahuasca. And after that, it took me to this place where I seen this visual. And I'll put up a picture because I'm pretty sure I have the picture that I drew. And I'm a horrible artist, so don't, whatever. But basically, it took, it took me to this place where it was like the end of, end of the road almost. Like the, and then like it started, I seen this face. And the face split off, and it was the father, the mother, and the child, right? Um, it almost looks like... But realistically, it looked like what the Christians say, that one Christian saying, uh, the father, the mother, the child, and the Holy Spirit, whatever. And it was like... Because it was like that, right? Because it was funneled up. It was like there was a funnel, right? It looked child at the bottom, mother, father, and then this funnel that like was narrow and then got bigger and bigger and was the entire light dimension. The city of light, the other dimensions. Most people would call that heaven, uh, but whatever. It's just the other realms, the other, the, the doorway, right? And once you go past that doorway, that's, that's past the threshold. That's the breakthrough um, through there, right? But I didn't get to go through there, most likely because I didn't take a high enough dose. And at this point, as I was going through seeing this, as I was whatever, I had to I had to piss physically. Like I physically had to take a piss, and like I almost chose to take a piss there and piss my pants. But I was at my friend's house, and I didn't want to piss on their fucking floor. Um, so I. And they had blankets laying on the floor and shit. So I didn't want to piss on their blankets and shit. So I had to get up and go piss. And when I sat back down, I couldn't get... I just couldn't get back into it. And couldn't get back into the experience. And so that's kind of where the deepness of the experience ended. And after that, it was similar to a typical mushroom trip where I was talking with my friends. We were talking about our experiences. Uh, that we just went through. The walls were breathing like mushrooms. Uh, the visuals looked similar to mushrooms, but more feminine-like. Um, and yeah, and the whole experience all together lasted about three and a half, four hours. Um, but yeah, that's really that. It was uh, it was definitely a really deep and life-changing experience, and. Um, made me realize a lot about myself and it made me realize that the thing about death the funny thing about death is that we are so worried about being judged by at the end of time right how everyone says judgment day how you will be judged for your sins or you will be judged for what you did or you will be judged for what you didn't do or you know uh, it's no you're really not going to be, my conclusion from this experience is you're really not going to be judged by God or the experience or Mother Ayahuasca or Mother Mary or Jesus or Buddha or whoever you believe in. You're not going to be judged. Um, you'll be judged by yourself. And how harsh and how hard are you going to be on yourself is the question. That's what it Remind, that's what it just taught me 
is that it will forgive us, but will you forgive yourself? And if you can't forgive yourself, then you're trapped in hell. Meaning you're trapped in your own regret, your own misery, your own anger, your own sadness, your own darkness, your own shadow. Um, it's all you. If you can forgive, if you can learn to love your shadow, learn to forgive the things you've done wrong, learn to f and realize there is no such thing as wrong. There's only um, lessons and experiences and, you know, this is just part of life, right? But yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, sorry this video was longer than I really wanted it to be, but I wanted to get everything out. Um, yeah. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.